Good morning. My name is Cenk Zoskar. I'm with the University of California, Riverside. Today, I'll talk about mattress design for energy storage. This is one of my labs on campus, and we are uh, well equipped with fabrication and characterization facilities. We have so far 28 patents uh, granted on energy storage, and we have 50 more applications uh, under your consideration. We have a number of different formats for energy storage devices. The first one is the cylindrical cell. This is the famous Panasonic 18 uh, 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 18650. And here, I'm inside, we have the wound layers of a separator, anode, and cathode, and in multi layers. And, and so this uh, cylindrical enclosure uh, is very protective to uh, keep the battery intact. The next uh, format is the pouch cell. Here, the uh, separator, the anode, and, and the cathode are sectioned. I'm into well defined uh, dimensions, and they are I mean, closed and sealed in this uh, uh, soft shell uh, uh, format. Here, uh, I mean, the upright is the, the prismatic cell. So this is a, a hard shell case, and the one the layers are actually uh, are, are flattened and stored in the form. So uh, both the a cylindrical cell and the, the prismatic cell uh, uh, provide uh, actually uh, cheaper solutions for battery fabrication. Um, the, the one on the bottom right here um, is the coin cell, and this is uh, actually very standard in academia because it uses very small amounts of active material. Okay, so one can actually uh, classify, uh, d d depending on when you plot the specific power versus specific energy. Uh, so, so roughly, uh, you know, so where the, the supercapacitors, the batteries, the, the fuel cells fit. So uh, the supercapacitors are characteristic with um, high specific power and batteries are characteristic with uh, high specific energy. So perhaps for an automotive application, those two uh, that, that can be combined. Okay. Um, uh, so Maxwell is one a company uh, uh, actually providing solutions to supplement uh, energy storage that systems. CapEx uh, is a company that provides solutions for very specific applications. And so what we show here, for example, in this case is a vibration energy harvesting module uh, as a remote a network sensor node. So, so let's take a look at uh, what the supercapacitor is. So they actually possess a capacitor's values much higher compared to the standard capacitors. And they can store 10 to 100 times more charge per unit volume. Uh, I mean, the EDLC or a double layer. They can accept and deliver charges much faster than batteries, and they can tolerate more charge and discharge the cycles. And this is given by their very large or enormous gas surface area. Um, Supercapacitors can, can be symmetric or asymmetric, so de depending on what you use, the mass electrodes. And the, and the asymmetric supercapacitor actually uh, is similar to a battery. So supercapacitors, or from this point, I'll call them as the supercaps, can be classified into the double layer and, and also pseudo the type capacitors. So for double layer capacitors, the mechanism is design absorption, and desorption, and for, and for pseudo capacitors, the, the mechanism is uh, by charge, the transfer between electrode and electrolyte. So for example, the redox reactions, and intercalation. I mean, the case of EDLCs, we, uh, so uh, 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 the, the various forms of carbon are very popular. So for example, activated carbons and, and hydrogels, et cetera. And for pseudo caps, for example, metal oxides or, or hydroxides, such, such as manganese oxide, the ruthenium oxide are used. Okay. So now I would like to, uh, Mention about this a noble material system called the PGN or the Pilgrim Graphene Nanostructure, so which is the, the composed of 
a graphene uh, floor with uh, carbon nanotube uh, pillars. So this idea was originally uh, so, uh, uh, conceptualized in, in, in 2008. And here, um, at that time, uh, this imagination of the multi-layers uh, separated with uh, pillars in between, of course, this is very hard to make. And then, in, I mean, the practical sense, you have a single floor and then a forest of tubes on top. So we, so we first synthesized this back in 2009 and, and, and published a number of articles on this a number of times. And we have also a number of patents that are granted on these um, as well. So this the structure can possess very high the surface area, uh, depending on, uh, so for example, if there is activation, further down to uh, actually be able to use all the pores. And up to about 3,000 meters squared per gram, the surface area is possible. So the PGN, it can be fabricated on, for example, commercial roll to roll materials, including the nickel foam. And, and the foam architecture is shown over here. So these are rather micro to macro scale pores. And one can uh, deposit, uh, for example, iron particles there's a catalyst seed there to grow carbon nanotubes. And that can be done, for example, using a ferrocene a solution. And then, for example, one can use uh, acetylene uh, and, and uh, for example, a temperature between 750 C to about 1000 degrees, depending on the uh, furnace recipe. And then, so one can grow different forms of nanocarbons on top of the foam. And uh, this architecture can be further complemented using, for example, a manganese oxide um, nano ribbons or nano wires to add, add further on the uh, um, specific capacitance value. Um, we have also used this uh, architecture to build uh, some of the fastest charging ba batteries on the planet. And, and I'll talk about that as well. And the call of our work uh, have been uh, widely publicized by many news channels. So first of all, on the PGN and manganese oxide, uh, hybrid supercapacitor. So, uh, so, uh, so in this case, we fabricated the symmetric supercapacitors and used, for example, lithium sulfate uh, uh, aqueous electrolyte. And so, so one can do a number of different measurements on this. For example, this shows exactly voltammetry measurements here. So, this voltage window is very important. So, we can uh, we can take a look at the uh, uh, extent to which this window uh, uh, can, can be enlarged into. In this case, uh, well, you, you can't really go uh, way too much beyond 1.5 or, or 1.6 volts in this case, because then it gets into a region with irreversible chemical reactions. But, but of course, uh, so that's a limitation with this accuracy electrolyte here. And with organic electrolytes, we have demonstrated this voltage window going up to about uh, 2.8 to uh, 3.2 volts. Um, we have demonstrated uh, yeah, specific capacities in excess of uh, 100 farads per gram. And uh, so this also demonstrated a very high capacities the retention which is indicating very high electrochemical stability. Some of the very interesting observations we have made. So for example, in this case, the pores are fully used um, after about 400 or 500 initial cycles and which, so we have seen an overshoot of the capacitance retention. So as, as far as charge storage mechanisms, we have two. So one mechanism, the, uh, obviously intercalation of metal ions. And uh, in this case, so uh, these are lithium plus ions from the aqueous electrolyte. And the second mechanism uh, is the surface absorption of, of, of ions on both the pseudo-capacitive and the carbon uh, materials. And again, uh, we have seen this uh, uh, a small enhancement uh, of the, the capacitance. So due to uh, the uh, further pore activation in the first few hundred cycles. We have developed a number of 
the mature systems in the lab. And so this is actually matures by design. So the first on the list uh, is the silicon nanofiber, the fabric anode. So this is uh, derived from, uh, from electro spinning a TOS tetraethyl orthosilicate and then doing a carbon coat on, on top uh, after a magnesotermic reduction to obtain silicon. And so this has indicated a capacity of about 800 milliampere hours per gram. Next on the list is the, 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 uh, a monodispersed a silicon carbon composite spheres. This is actually our, our flagship material, and I'll uh, talk about the PAL cell that we have fabricated from this. So we have, we have obtained uh, uh, about 1500 to 1900 milliampere hours per gram uh, after 500 cycle set. Uh, C over two rate. And by the way, uh, so C rate, our battery specifies how fast your, your battery can be charged or discharged. So one C means you charge your battery in one hour, as an example, with a one amp current. So, so C over two means you charge your battery in two hours. Two C means you charge your battery in half an hour. And we have uh, demonstrated the use of beet sand to obtain very high quality nanosilicon. We have uh, demonstrated the capacity of over 1,000 uh, um, uh, um, uh, after 1,000 cycles at a C over two rate. Um, the PGM architecture was used to the fabricated battery. You know, I'll talk about that uh, shortly with the capacity in excess of 1900 milliampere hours per gram. We have used a number of sustainable uh, sources. So, so this is important to demonstrate uh, basically uh, uh, circular economy, being able to uh, upcycle uh, the waste materials and, and also be, being able to mi minimize the carbon footprint or decarbonization efforts. So for this, so uh, so rather than mining the ore, uh, which is the graphite, and then you would have to purify this using a harsh chemical solution. So one solution is to use the portobello mushrooms, already porous in nature, and and they can be pulverized uh, under an inert atmosphere. And then so this has demonstrated an anode capacity of about four uh, in excess of four hundred milliampere hours per gram. Uh, after 1700 cycles. We have demonstrated the use of plastic waste and, and glass waste bottles. So this is very important and aids into the circular economy of everything. So uh, the carbon from the plastic waste has been used successfully for super caps and batteries. And the glass waste has been used to um, actually synthesize high quality nanosilicon with um, which demonstrated uh, 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 an overall uh, long cycle capacity of in excess of 1400 milliampere hours per gram uh, at a CO2 rate. So to realize the battery from PGM, we have actually uh, done some processing to obtain a cluster shape. So this enables actually the electrolyte to be able to penetrate um, into the structure. And this very uh, architecture it basically is seamlessly the, the connected and, and will enable the fastest electron, the transfer rate. So this was uh, subjected to a, thin, a silicon layer coat. So this pro, so PCVD provides a thin amorphous coat on top, so which, which aids in increasing the capacity um, of the electrode. So we have indicated uh, a capacity in excess of 1900 milliampere hours per gram. And we have also demonstrated very high charge rates uh, up to about HD and still maintains the capacity of over the 500 in this case. So this is a material which is important for uh, very special applications that needs um, high speed the charging. The silicon carbon, the, the composite sphere comes from a flagship material. And um, actually this uh, uh, carbon coating is very important to enable the sufficient conductivity. And so, uh, uh, of course, uh, so we apply a magnesotermic uh, reduction and then obtain very high quality and super nanoporous silicon. 
Um, so the TM images um, here indicate Gewürztraminer layer of the carbon uh, over silicon. And this has indicated uh, I'm actually a very high capacitance. So at the very beginning in excess of uh, 3,200 uh, milliampere hours per gram and then sustains uh, uh, over 2,500 uh, battery I mean, the first 100 cycles, and in the long term, uh, between 1500 to 1900, uh, the value. And we have later, I use this for actually building cloud cells. And, and I'll mention that at the very end. Next on the list is uh, essentially the use of waste plastics, in this case, PET, this is polyethylene, tetraethylate. So we dissolve this in proper solvents and subject them to uh, so first electro spinning to have a very large surface area followed by carbonization. And at that point, the, the, this can be used I mean, as a slot stunning electrode, or we can further subject to ball milling to, 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 to obtain even uh, a higher sur the, the surface area. And I have two movies to show on this actually very really briefly. So this uh, shows the process in the lab. So the idea with electro spinning uh, is to obtain a large uh, continuous fabric. Um, so over here, um, so uh, after uh, uh, electro spinning, we obtain a fabric like that. And so this is directly used uh, to uh, ba ba basically section an anode and, 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 and successfully used in super caps. Um, and we are uh, at the moment uh, working on battery fabrication. And uh, we believe that this is going to be a promising uh, approach to uh, upcycle, uh, okay, large amounts of uh, sustainable uh, waste materials. Okay, so um, I would like to wrap it up. So I'll just briefly mention uh, about our, uh, so one of our, uh, our cathode works. So, so this is on sulfur. So uh, there has been a number of approaches to um, actually be, being able to encapsulate the sulfur. It possesses a very high the capacity and, and energy density. This is environmentally benign, um, highly cost-effective and uh, and also abundant in nature. So it's a, uh, so, so an electrically lower yeah, yeah, fabrication cost. And as you may know, the price of, for example, cobalt and nickel are essentially uh, are substantially increasing uh, in these days. So there are a number of problems with a sulfur. So one is polysulfide shuttling. I'll mention about our solutions next. This uh, material also possesses uh, some expansion, not as bad as uh, the silicon, which is up to about 400%. In the case of sulfur, it's about 80%. And poor conductivity can be handled with carbon coating. And uh, for example, over here, what we have done is to contain the sulfur uh, uh, as a controllable material. We have, I mean, closed them in, I mean, in a tin, like 18 to 20 nanometer thick silicon shell. Made out of TEOS. TEOS is tetraethyl uh, mortal silicate. So that way, the polysulfide shutting that can be minimized. And uh, the water expansion can cause a cracking of the shell. And that can be mitigated by having a compliant a code of, uh, so based on mildly uh, reduced uh, graphene oxide sheets. And they will actually form a secondary code around the uh, particles and they, they will also uh, aid in conductivity as well. So uh, we have fabricated actually a full cell uh, sulfur silicon system. And so this indicated an overall uh, 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 essentially a capacity of 350 watts hour per kilogram. There are other ways to mitigate the the polysulfide the shutting as well. And this is another one that, that, that we have done uh, ba ba the, the, based on titanium oxide uh, thin film co uh, coating over the uh, sulfur cathode. And we have also studied this with uh, the density functional theory computations. So this actually shows the interaction of co 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 co
and uh, some uh, chosen lithium sulfur compounds uh, with the um, titanium oxide that can fill. So communication of lithium, uh, the strong lithium oxygen bonds will dominate the interactions and the lithium ions can actually go through this uh, layer code. Whereas the lithium sulfur compounds are actually interacting in a way that they are actually a mask from, uh, they are prevented from going in. So the titanium oxide forms, forms an effective barrier for this purpose. Um, finally, um, um, I would like to mention about our PAL cell uh, made from the silicon carbon composite sphere anode. So we have actually I mean, indicated uh, a, a volumetric density of 850 watt hour per liter and the gravimetric weight density of 290 watt hour per kilogram. And uh, uh, so, so initial calculations indicate a cost of about $120 per kilowatt hour. And this is due, the only initial prototype fabrication. And we believe this number can go down below $100. So with this, uh, I would like to uh, end my talk and I would like to thank you for your attention.